What if robots could look so real that you couldn't tell the difference between a human and a machine? Imagine a face that doesn't just blink on command, but blinks at the right time, with the right micro twitch in the eyelid, the tiny head tilt that says, I'm listening, and that split-second smirk you only catch when someone is about to laugh. That's what's blowing up the internet right now, and at the center of it is a Headform's new ultra-lifelike robot head called M1. It blinks, it twitches, it mirrors you. It even times its expressions with your words, so the conversation feels alive. Is this the future of human-like AI or just a creepy step too far? So what exactly is a Headform's M1 robot head? It's a lifelike robotic face made to study and improve human-robot interaction. The M1 focuses only on expression, blinking, smiling, and reacting naturally to make conversations with machines feel more human. It's designed to show emotions and respond to people in real time, making it one of the most realistic robot heads ever shown online. Why just the head? Because that's where the magic of social connection lives. A head form's bet is that we don't need a full humanoid body to test what makes people comfortable around machines. We need eyes that track, eyebrows that question, lips that sink to speech, a jaw that pauses at the right beat. This head-first design helps teachers, researchers, and creators add a friendly human-like face to things like reception desks, kiosks, museums, or classrooms Without needing a full robot body or high costs, it's a focused path to solving the hardest part of human-robot interaction, making the machine feel relatable the instant you meet it. So how real is it, really? The internet split, which is always a sign something important just happened. On one side, people are stunned, calling it the most realistic robot face they've ever seen. The timing of the blinks, the little eyebrow lifts, the way the eyes don't dart like a camera, but glide like they're thinking, those details trick your social instincts into engaging. On the other side, some can't shake the eerie feeling, the uncanny valley tingle you get when a thing looks human but moves a fraction off from how a human would. The divide is exactly the point. A head form wants to cross that valley by refining the micro motions until your brain stops flagging robot and starts accepting presence. The goal isn't to spook you, it's to make machines feel natural enough that you forget you're negotiating with metal and code and start talking like you would to a person. Does that realism make us more comfortable or more uncomfortable? Maybe both, depending on where your line is. You've stuck around this far. You're clearly into it. Go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Okay, back to the video. Let's get specific about how M1 works, because the realism isn't a costume. It's a system. First, the hardware. Those 25 micromotors give the face high degrees of freedom, so instead of a few big movements, you get many tiny ones layered together. Brow tension rises as lids lower, eye virgins shifts while the head tips a hair to the side. That's the recipe for aliveness. Second sensing, the embedded RGB cameras in the eyes give the head a person's eye vantage point to detect faces, gaze direction, and expressions. Microphones let it hear your voice, while speakers return speech that syncs with mouth motion. Third, intelligence. A head form's roadmap is to pair the head with self-supervised learning and large language models so the software can predict emotions, mirror what it sees, and coordinate facial expressions with speech in real time. That's where synchronized lip motion, gentle nods, and reactive smiles line up with what the AI is saying, not just what the motors can do. If that sounds ambitious, it comes from a track record. A Headform's founder, Yu Hang Hu, spent years in robotics research pushing this exact frontier. How to make a machine not just articulate words, but articulate feelings through motion. An earlier project nicknamed Emo explored real-time facial mirroring, detecting your expression and rendering a matching response with minimal delay. That research DNA is visible in M1's design. Fast perception, expressive actuation, and the aim for emotion-aware timing that sells the illusion of understanding. We should be honest here. Robots don't feel in a human sense. But in social interaction, mimicry, timing, and expression carry a lot of weight. If a robot can read your smile and return a warm look at the exact right moment, your brain gives it credit for empathy, even if that empathy is computed. Is that a bridge to genuine understanding later, 
or a clever mask that makes us trust machines too quickly? Would you chat with a face this real, yes or no? Comment below. That's the ethical edge a head form is skating. Of course, this isn't happening in a vacuum. Humanoid robotics is a global arms race and China's pouring fuel on it. A head form founded in 2024 isn't just a one-off demo. It's building product lines in parallel. The ELF series leans into fantasy aesthetics with pointy-eared characters that showcase expressive faces for installations and brand experiences, while the LAN series targets cost-efficient human-like bots that trade some realism for scalability. On the business side, a head form has already secured funding from major backers like Shunwei Capital, China Merchants Venture, Shenzhen Capital Group, and Akibot, signaling that investors see social robot faces as a strategic pillar for the country's humanoid ambitions. Meanwhile, the global field is crowded and heating up. Tesla with Optimus, Figure AI with its warehouse-ready humanoids, Unitree pushing agile platforms, Agibot's industrial play. If you're a head form, a best-in-class expressive head could be the edge that slots into many bodies and many markets, a face layer others license rather than reinvent. Could M1 give them real leverage in the humanoid race? If realism becomes the key to trust, the answer might be yes. Still, we have to ask the uncomfortable questions out loud. Is this breakthrough exciting or a little terrifying? Each step toward realism blurs the line between tool and replacement, between a helpful interface and a stand-in for human presence. The upside is enormous. Better bedside manners from a robot in a hospital, kinder classroom assistance for kids who need patience, richer experiences in museums and retail. But if a machine can mirror your feelings, does it start to shape them? If it's easy to bond with a face that never tires, never judges, and always responds just right, do we start preferring it to people when life gets messy? And if the same technology spreads into advertising or influence campaigns, could an army of perfectly timed smiles and earnest eye contact become a new persuasion machine? The uncanny valley is an emotional speed bump for a reason. It makes you pause and ask what exactly you're consenting to when your brain says person and your cortex knows robot. Where then could this tech actually matter? Think about any setting where a human face makes engagement easier. Customer service is the obvious one. A hotel concierge head that recognizes you from earlier, holds eye contact, and answers questions with the same warm cues a person uses. Education. A tutor that can see confusion on a student's face and slow down, or mirror excitement when the answer clicks. Entertainment. Museum guides, theme park characters, and brand ambassadors. You remember not because they spoke, but because they reacted. Healthcare. Therapy companions that can reflect a patient's mood and invite conversation, or elderly care assistants that reduce loneliness by being consistently present and expressive. Research. Labs measuring how facial nuance builds trust and how timing changes disclosure in sensitive interviews. The brilliance of the only head concept is that it slots into all of these with minimal mechanical footprint. You can mount it on a desk, a pedestal, a mobile base, or a humanoid torso later. If your study is about emotion or your installation is about character, the head is already the whole show. Let's circle back to the nuts and bolts for a second, because craft matters here. The M1's silicone-based skin stretches and wrinkles in sync with the motors beneath it. So expressions form from the inside out rather than as a mask moving on top. The micro motors are custom brushless designs optimized for low noise, which keeps the scene cinematic instead of mechanical. The stereoscopic vision from the eye cameras gives a natural angle for face tracking and gaze control. The result is line of sight that feels intentional, not retargeted by a sensor bolted to the chest. Data and power are routed through a base interface, tethered today for demos with external compute handling heavy AI while onboard controllers handle motor coordination. It's all modular, tuned, and purpose-built for one thing, social presence. In demos, that combination has been convincing enough to make seasoned viewers do a double take, then lean in instead of stepping back. Even critics who feel the eerie twinge concede that the motion quality and timing are a step change from the stiff, servo-noisy androids of a few years ago. And yes, public reaction has been loud. Clips of the M1 and its sibling showpieces racked up millions of views within days. 
with feed split between Westworld is here jokes and sincere amazement at the life in the eyes. Some viewers insist the valley's been crossed. Others say it's the closest we've ever been, but not quite there. That split is useful feedback for a head form. Keep tightening the synchronization between speech and micro expressions. Keep smoothing the gaze saccades. Keep tuning the eyebrow musculature to read as. So would you be okay talking to a robot doctor, teacher, or customer service rep if it looked this real? If the face soothed your nerves before a procedure or noticed your confusion and slowed down a lesson, would that feel like help or manipulation? What if it made waiting in line less frustrating because the person behind the desk met your eyes and apologized with believable concern? We already accept virtual agents that sound friendly. Adding a face might move acceptance from fine to I prefer this. That's the opportunity and the responsibility. Design choices at this layer shape how societies adapt to synthetic social presence. Guardrails, disclosure, and clear this is a robot cues might be necessary in the early years, even as the engineering tries to make those cues feel unnecessary. Is M1 the start of robots that not only look like us, but also understand us? The fair answer for now is that it understands how to look like it understands us. And that alone has power. Humans are wired to respond to faces. A well-timed nod changes whether we keep talking. A sympathetic micro-smile changes whether we trust. If a machine can deploy those tools ethically, clearly, transparently, and in service of our goals, we get better interfaces and warmer experiences. If it uses them to extract more of our time, data, or agreement than we meant to give, we're in trouble. Technology doesn't choose, people do. The exciting part about M1 is that it gives designers and researchers an instrument tuned to human nuance they've never had before. The scary part is that nuance cuts both ways. Before we wrap, a quick reality check. This is new tech, not a mass product you can order tonight. Demos today tend to be tethered. Heavy AI processing still rides off board. Long-term durability hasn't been proven in the wild. Pricing isn't public and early deployments will likely be in labs, exhibitions, and pilot programs rather than homes. But the trajectory is clear. Iterate the motors for smoother, low-noise motion. Refine the skin for better crease physics. Improve the gaze model. Connect the head to LLM-powered agents that adapt to each user, and test in real settings so the software learns what works with people, not just with datasets. It's a playbook we've watched in other fields. The twist this time is that the interface stares back, so here's the last question I'll leave you with. Would you interact with a robot this lifelike, or would it creep you out? If you saw M1 in a hospital hallway, or behind a reception desk, or teaching a class, would you lean in or look away? Tell me in the comments. I'm reading every one.